All right, good morning, guys, and welcome to another installment in our series. Um, just to recap, yes, in the last episode, I talked about how to hold your camera, how to move the camera. Okay, we categorize those moves as hand holding, not hand holding, hand holding. Okay, but you need to know the truth. The truth is, professionals try not to. By the way, guys, I keep referring to the word professional versus you guys. I don't mean to insult you, but you need to know that there is a main difference between a professional and an amateur. And the professional, well, they follow certain rules. Okay? They have to. All right? They are being paid for their job and the customer expects a certain standard. Now, to achieve that standard in this particular case, holding your camera is not perfect. I mean, guys, I'm going to be honest. If you look at movies and all the feature films that you have seen, you will find shots that are so static, all right? Or they move very, very smoothly. The reason for that is that we want you, the audience, to focus on the content on the screen and not the movement of the camera, okay? If I am distracted by the movement of the camera, I have failed as a cinematographer, okay? So... I recommend that you pay attention to this next few minutes because this simple step is going to take you from amateur to professional in one simple leap. And the next step is tripods. That's right, guys. We are going to learn how to use a tripod. We're going to learn how to hack a tripod. And most importantly, we're going to learn if we need to buy an expensive tripod or a simple cheap one. Okay, guys? So let's get started. I don't want to make this video a long one. I, 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 I feel that the videos are getting too long. So let's speed it up. Here we go. All right, so let's start with the very, very simple and basic tripod. By the way, guys, I'm going to do something unique in this video so that you can learn as well. I'm going to introduce you to something called a cutaway. This is a cutaway. That's right. A cutaway means I am cutting your attention to something else. I am introducing another scene, another image, another video, okay? And I'm replacing this entire frame with that image, okay? Now, we introduce cutaways because we can't explain everything that we want here. For example, if I'm talking about this is a head, can you see it? Hard to see, right? Right. So I have decided that I'm going to take a video of this somewhere else at a later date, Okay, and then edit it into the sequence. So this shot is called a cutaway shot. I'm looking somewhere else and then I come back. Okay, all right. Now, shooting this shot is often called B-roll. This kind of footage or this kind of video is called B-roll. What you are seeing right now from this camera, by the way, this is the A camera. We call this in the industry A-roll. Letter A. I will take another video camera and I will shoot just this head. That footage is called B-roll, okay? And B-roll is usually shot after A. Why is that? Well, simply because the A camera dictates the story. What I say here right now is the story. I don't know I'm going to talk about this. I don't know if I'm going to talk about the light. But if I do, then I know, hmm... I think I need some additional footage to cover that. I'll shoot some B-roll. That can be done later in the afternoon, that can be done tomorrow, it doesn't matter. Okay guys? So how does it help you as an educator? Simple. You tell a story, you talk, you give a presentation, you look at your footage and then you realize, ah, here I'm talking about chlorophyll. Okay, if you're teaching biology or science, I'm talking about chlorophyll. I need a photo to explain because my mouth cannot explain everything in detail. Boom! You put the B-roll right now. Okay? Now, you can put B-roll in a few ways. You can fill up the whole frame or you can also do something called a PNP, a picture-in-picture -picture effect, like this. The light's making sound. All right? Now, if you put a picture-in-picture -picture effect like this, I am still on the screen and I can still talk about it. I can even point about it. Okay? You can do a simple effect by making it a square like this or you can make it transparent and let it float. 
and then you can point like this. What's the difference? Well, the floating one is harder to do and you need a really powerful computer to do it. The square one is simple to do, but it's hard to see sometimes. All right? So you decide, do I want a full screen B-roll? Do I want a picture-in-picture -picture square box? Do I want a floating transparent B-roll? Of course, don't forget, you also need to put titles. You can put a caption. Down here, it's a caption. All right? This area down here is called a subtitle area. This is where you put text that you want to read continuously. If you want to draw attention to the audience randomly, like now, you can put the text up here. Okay? There are certain rules to putting text. Try not to put the text up here. Try not to put the text vertically. Yeah, we don't read that. Okay? We are used to reading text in the center screen area like this or at the bottom. If it's at the bottom, we consider it subtitles. Okay? All right. Now, let's talk about tripods. This is a light stand. It is not a tripod. Okay? We buy this stand because we use it to mount our lights, to put accessories on it. The reason I'm introducing this to you is because the camera gear that we are using today, well, it's a handphone. Okay? And handphones are not heavy, guys. They are very, very light. Okay? So a stand like this is perfect for handphones. It's cheap to buy, 25 bucks, I keep saying, and it's easy to carry, fold and carry. Look at that tripod. Yeah, that's not heavy, <laughs> that's not light, sorry. And that's inconvenient as hell. But look at the camera. The tripod must be heavy because the camera is heavy. That's the philosophy of tripods, okay? You buy a tripod to support the type of gear that you are using. So the first one I'm introducing to you is a light stand, but the light stand has unique features. You can buy this separately. I don't know if you can see, right. This piece here, this round piece here. Here, let me put the thing slightly higher up. Okay, I'll add a B-roll somewhere around so you can have a look. Now this, this piece here is called a ball head. If I loosen this, I can literally angle this part here. So if I want the camera down, you know what? Let me pause the video and let me get a camera. I've got my camera. I'm going to show you how to fix it on. By the way, guys, I was uh, checking online yesterday about handphones. I normally do that. And the latest version of the Redmi Note 10 is now on sale in Xiaomi Global website for $699. They have dropped the price right down and replaced the Note 9. Okay? What does this mean to you? It means that if you can find a Note 9 in the shops, the shops will be wanting to sell it off quickly. They may give you a good discount. Buy the Note 9, not the 10. <laughs> okay, guys, there is not much difference between the Note 9 and the Note 10 for you to consider it. If you can get the Note 9 for a lot less, go ahead. If you can get the Note 8 for a lot less, also go ahead. Okay, all right, so let's get down to this. This is a Note Three, still working, still beautiful. So, this is how we do it. That's the ball head. It allows you to move it into whatever angle you want, and then you lock it. It stays in that position, all right? This unit here is the phone clamp, okay? By the way, this is the phone clamp you can purchase locally from the shops for about five ringgit or eight ringgit, somewhere around there. This ball head, you can purchase it for between 15 to 20 ringgit, also from similar shops. And the light stand is 25. So if you calculate the cost of this, it's dirt cheap, all right? I recommend you get a few and use two or three cameras. One can be a new one, one can be your old one, and shoot from different angles, okay? That makes your production really classy, really professional. To use it, it's very straightforward, right? Push it to the top, Lift it and stick it in. Ta-da! Another window sound. <laughs> and you now have a very nice tripod. Okay? Again, the word tripod means three legs. Okay? There's no such thing as a bipod. Bipod is two legs. It won't stand up. It will fall down. All right? You will also not find the term quad pod or four legs because it's unnecessary. All you need is three legs for anything to stand up. 
All right, guys? All right, so this is the light stand monopod. I will demonstrate how to use it later and how to get really nice shots. But for now, what I want to do is introduce you to the next one. This is a photo tripod. Okay? It looks really cool. It looks really nice. It's small in size and it is cheap as chips. This 25 ringgit. So right now, all of you are saying, well, why Mr. Yen asked to buy this one when this one is only 25 ringgit? Okay, this light, this, this stand can go up to 6 feet, over 6 feet, above my head. This one comes up to about here. That's it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you decide which one you want. All right. More importantly, this one, the legs open up very, very wide. Which means if you use this and you leave it there and there's a strong wind or if someone accidentally knocks the stand, it may not fall down. This one, on the other hand, might fall down. So you need to weigh the pros and cons. Okay, This one can go higher, but it's more robust. This one, not so robust, but the legs are open up pretty big. Okay, It has a head already, you don't have to buy the head but you need to buy the phone clamp, okay? So that's a photo tripod, all right? Now, photo tripods are great, all right? In fact, if you can afford it, you could buy the bigger version. This one's about uh, 500 bucks. You can get some decent ones for 300 something. But if you look at it, robust, solid, strong. And see the ball head here? Even the ball head, it's so big. It's so... Mm. This is too much for a handphone. But if you have a DSLR and you want to improve yourself eventually and buy a DSLR, please get this one. That small chiku one, tabli jalan. Doesn't work. You need a minimum of this. Okay? This guy is a photo tripod. And the head, again, locks into place and... Mm, can't be moved really solid okay this small fella here not so solid so don't try and move it like that it'll break <laughs> this one yeah really really tough okay now all of these tripods are made of local material they're mostly made of uh, three things carbon fiber stainless steel and aluminium all of them are great okay all of them were designed not to rust Okay, except the cheap ones. The cheap ones are made of normal steel and chances are it will rust. So again, you decide what you want. You want a product that lasts you a lifetime or do you want a product that you can use for the next year because next year you're going to upgrade? You decide. Now let's talk about the big elephant in the room, the professional tripod. And I'm going to use the professional tripod to illustrate one key difference between these two tripods. By the way, guys, these two tripods, while they look the same, they have a very different function. Okay? Photo tripods, the head cannot move. The moment you lock it, it stays that way. All right? Just like now. All right? This camera is not moving. I'm not turning anywhere. I am moving. Okay? This is a photo tripod. But a video tripod... Let me bring it. Let me bring it forward. Let me put the legs down. And as you can see, guys, it's not easy to use. <laughs> but it is so important because it has one feature. Uh, lights blocking. It has one feature that we want, and that is this head. Okay, this is called a fluid head or a video head, and. It allows you to move. Look at that. See how beautiful, how smooth that movement is? This action, left to right, is the pan. This action is the tilt. See that? And then you can do pans and tilt. And if you want to lock it, you just turn a knob. It gets stuck. Okay, guys? 
you don't need to buy that one. But even if you do want to buy that one, I'm going to give you the good news. This is uh, this this video tripod leg and head comes from China, and it can be purchased for five hundred dollars. Yeah, five hundred bucks gets you that tripod. But I know a lot of you are saying, "I'm not going to carry that big tripod, one small camera." <laughs> exactly. So here's what you want to try. You want to look for this leg, but you want a video head. Tuka. That's right guys, professional gear is modular. You can take off the head, put another head on, and it becomes something new. Okay. In fact, when I travel, I have only one pair of legs. All right? Sometimes I call them sticks in the industry. But the Kapala, I've got many versions. I've got one for photo, I've got one for video, I've got one for macro photography. I even have one for 360 panorama photography. Okay, remember, I do this for a living. So if I want to do something special, I just remove this head, put a new one on, and I get to work. I don't carry five different tripod legs. Totally not necessary. But I do also have this. This guy is indispensable in my arsenal because <laughs> I use this not to only mount handphones, but other things as well. I can put my audio recorder here. I'll introduce the audio recorder uh, in another ep episode. I'll even put a tablet sometimes. Yes, I know you all, I told you that I don't put tablets here. Actually, I do, but I don't use it to shoot. I use it to look at what I'm shooting. So I'm shooting like this. It's connected to the tablet. I'm looking at the tablet. Okay, guys? Right, so these are called support gear or support equipment. And uh, at the end of this video, I am going to take a fluid head. I am going to take this handphone grip, stick it on the fluid head, and I'm going to go and shoot some beautiful pans and tilts with a tripod so that you can see the difference between handheld and tripod shots. Okay, guys? All right, so that's the short video for today. All about grips. Tomorrow, we're going to start working on the shooting process. Okay? How, what it takes to shoot something, how to plan a shoot, and how to take it into the editing suite. Now, I know you guys are chomping at the bit and you want to get started with editing and all that kind of stuff. That's great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the description, I'm going to put some links in the description to two software that you can download to your phone, uh, Android phone, Apple iOS. I'm very sorry, I have no idea. We need to do some research on that. All right. The software in, uh, in mention is called Power Director and KineMaster. I think it's called. I think it's pronounced KineMaster. All right. Look at the links. Uh, you know, Power Director. I'll put a photo there. And KineMaster. Install it. Play with it. Okay. On the website, there are also some training videos. You can watch those training videos. Get started with those two software. Okay. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Bye.